<laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And at the end of the video, if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button as it does really help me out a lot. So today I'm going to be talking about a topic that means a lot to me, and that's photography. And I'm going to tell you my whole story of when I got into it, how I got into it, when that big leap happened, and where I am now with it, I guess. <laughs> so in December 2015, I decided to purchase my first ever DSLR camera, which was a Nikon D3200, which isn't the best camera, but I bought it secondhand from one of those exchange shops. And it came with a standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And I loved it. Honestly, it was the best thing for about a month. And then eventually I just kept it in my drawer for about half a year and just never used it at all. I just couldn't really get the perfect photo out of it, what I wanted to use the camera for. And about a year or so later, I found out about a Nikon lens, the 35mm 1.8, which is this lens right here. And that pretty much became my favourite thing and it just pushed me to do photography. Which is weird because, I don't know, is it weird? And that kind of pushed me to do photography because every shot that I took, I loved. I had the, bo the bokeh, <laughs> had the bokeh background and a sharp focused image and it was just perfect. Honestly, I loved taking photos all the time. Everything. It was My first photo I took of it was of my cat and I just loved it. Everything was just, everything was so... And yeah, so after taking these photos and realised how they were looking and how they made me feel after taking them, I thought it'd be a great idea to start a photography Instagram. And on November the 3rd, 2016, I created my Instagram page, Class Photography, and uploaded that picture of my cat. Because why not? You have to start somewhere. So now I had this lens and this camera, Everywhere I go, I took it with me and had every opportunity to take a photo of anything, whether it be of my cat, or a random bust outside St. Paul's, or uh, someone's back. I don't care. It was just, I had to take photos of something because one, I love the clearness of it, two, I love that blurry background, and three, I just thought it was so cool. So pretty much I was uploading photos every other day, every week, something like that, and it would just be of anything and anything and anyone. Any opportunity to take that photo, I'll take it. I was bringing the camera into my work with me and going around in London on my lunch breaks and taking photos. And eventually I thought it'd be a great idea to start a website, classphotography.co.uk. The website's no longer available because I stopped using it and I just stuck to Instagram. But I'll talk to you more about that in a sec. Classphotography.co.uk. It was a cool website I made from scratch using wix.com. This isn't an advertisement, but Wix, if you do want to advertise me, you know, I need, I need money, please. I'm so broke right now. It was great. It was a great website. I kept publishing new photos and new albums on there all the time. And yeah, it just, it was something, it was a new hobby for me that I really enjoyed. I was still just taking photos around London. I was taking photos of my friends and everything. And all around, it was just, it was great to have that camera. Eventually, I wanted to change my camera, so I upgraded to the Nikon D5500, which is funny enough, the camera that I still have now. It's great, honestly, it does everything I want it to do. It's got a little flip out screen, so it helps me with my vlogging and everything, and I can see what I'm doing. And yeah, it's a, it's a great camera. It's not a high end and it's not an entry level. It's kind of a bog standard middle one, but I do want to upgrade it soon, because I do want to move over to Sony mainly for the 4K footage and the mirrorless camera. I was still taking photos everywhere I went with this new camera. Eventually, I bought another lens, which was my fisheye lens, which I just used for everything. Funnily enough, a fisheye lens was one of my favorite lenses for a long period of time. And I always loved the fisheye effect for photography and everything. I was glad I got myself one of them. It was just a really generic one on eBay. I think it was about 100 and 20 pounds or something like that, but it's great. And now I want to tell you the story about how I became a rapper's photographer for the day. So in the UK, there's a rapper called Mist and he makes some pretty cool music. You should check him out. You probably know who he is. He's got a massive following just everywhere. He's completely blown up in the scene. I think he got a Movo as well recently, which is sick. 
and I have a friend at work who is good friends with one of his business partners and she was looking for a photographer to take photos of his pop-up event to help promote his new clothing line for his website. I arrived at this uh, venue, had not a clue who these people were, who they looked like and I went in and I got to meet Mist. Um, it's a really, really nice guy, great person to talk to and I just pretty much took photos all day. However, <laughs> This was at the time when I didn't know how to use Lightroom. And for people who don't know what Lightroom is, Lightroom is a photographer's go-to to make their photos look even better. And <laughs> I was editing my photos, all the ones that I'd been posting on Instagram, as well as my website, on a nice little phone app called Viesco. <laughs> and long story short, I did send around 50 to 100 photos that were edited on my phone. Oh, I have so much regret, honestly. But they still love the photos, which is good. They didn't credit me though. A few months down the line, I went traveling to a few countries with a good friend of mine who is also a photographer and videographer. His name's Antonello, who's actually in my um, recent video I did about the tall buildings. If you missed it, check it out. And also while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to Anto as he makes some really cool videos. We went to Paris and Italy and all these different countries and I brought my camera along with me and he basically taught me how to edit on Lightroom and not to be scared to take photos in RAW. And my God, it changed my life photography-wise. It was, it just realized, I realized then how much I was missing out on everything and the possibilities that I could do. And now from that day, I've shot everything in RAW and I'm just loving it. <laughs> my photos coming out, better than they originally did and it's great you know I mean every single photographer shoots in RAW I'm that I know of I don't know a single photographer that doesn't shoot in RAW because you take a photo every photo you see online I guarantee you that is not the photo that has come from the camera there is obviously going to be tweaks and color correction done to that photo and currently now I'm using my go-to lens it's the Sigma 17 to 50 2.8 lens I did actually mention that if I recall correctly in my first vlog that I did when I was saying about my setup. So this is the lens I kind of use for everything now. Um, it's just, it's my perfect lens. Final thing, I'm still doing photography. I don't use the class photography website anymore. Um, and also I recently did a poll because I am completely rebranding my current class photography and I've chosen the name of class visuals, which loads of people liked. Um, I was stuck between captured by class, which sounds really dodgy, class visuals and class pics or something like that. It was, they just sound weird, but class visuals is my favorite thing. And a friend of mine also said that it means I can branch out into different things. It doesn't just have to limit down to photography. Obviously, as you know, I love making videos, so it can be another place where I can post them. So I think we're caught up now. Let's go look at some of my photos and how they've changed. I want to start, as I mentioned earlier, my first photo that I did, and that was the photo of my cat. This was literally no editing done to it. This was a straight JPEG from the camera because I loved it. And you can tell it's sharp and it's got a blurry background. I thought that was the best photo I'd ever taken at the time. No joke. This was two years ago. <laughs> my God, how things have changed. There is the photo of the person's back which is, um, those are two random strangers. I have not a clue who they are. They could probably be serial killers for all I know. But they're not, and I don't wanna get in trouble for saying that, so moving on. Money Tree? Oh yeah, this is, I went on a day trip to uh, Tate Modern, and I just pretty much took photos around there. So yeah, this is pretty much the highlight of what my photography was. Um, I eventually moved on to just taking photos of my friends seen here here and here I think I love the idea of sharp subject and a blurry background that's what I thought photography was that was it and it's really weird that I had that mindset <laughs> me and my good friend Sam I'll link his Instagram down below he wears cool clothes basically every now and then we will go out to London and just take photos of him wearing expensive clothes and this was actually our first shoot that we did in Camden and he was wearing some H&M jeans. 
a Pablo jacket and occasionally my Ausla jacket and I think that's a Supreme hoodie as well. And one of these photos actually blew up. I don't know how, it just kind of happened. So all my photos have got like around 30, 30 likes or, or 60 likes and all of a sudden this one's got 385. <laughs> Not a clue how. Um, so that kind of happened. But then that's it, then the next one's only got 40. So I don't know if there must have been some weird Instagram algorithm or something like that. But that happened and I remember that was one of my favourite photos that I'd taken as well at the time. Second to the photo of my cat. <laughs> so moving on, these next three photos, I went out with Antonello again and we took some photos. And funny enough, we actually ran into this photography event hosted by uh, UK Shooters, a massive photographer community on Instagram. And there was just so many photographers all just taking photos of random models with smoke and everything. And then this eventually became my new favorite photo of this guy lighting a cigarette with a spray paint can. I, it's so, so badass. And yeah, I remember taking that photo and being so happy with that. That was also edited on my phone. All these photos still that I'm talking about were all edited on my phone, which it breaks my heart. <laughs> it really does break my heart. Oh, here we go. Another new favourite photo, I remember. Um, getting off the plane, just arrived in Italy with uh, Antonello for our first European trip. We went to his home town in Italy and I took a photo of him getting off the plane with fisheye lens and it just turned out great. Also edited on my phone. <sighs> I, I, used, I used the fisheye a lot around this period of time. Um, mainly in Italy, always using that fisheye in the 35mm. I didn't actually have my Sigma lens at that time. And also Comic Con, um, here's a photo of my sister dressed up as a 50s Harley Quinn with Tomska. You remember, you remember Tomska, the guy who made the Asduff movies, the guy who made, who made the jokes about the jewellery. Yeah, he's a funny guy, isn't he? Miss Tomska. Paris, the time I used RAW. Time my photography changed. Yeah, it was great. Great trip. I went to Paris once again with Antonello. I only uploaded three photos. It was one of him and two of the Eiffel Tower. I was able to edit them properly. They were sharp photos. This is where I felt my photography started to get a bit better now. It was a big jump from going, taking loads of photos only with a fisheye lens and editing on my phone to suddenly using Lightroom and getting actual decent quality photos. Going after that, there's a small section of my Instagram that was dedicated to an art style by this photographer called Jazz Davis. And Jazz Davis is a massive inspiration for myself and a few photographer friends of mine. He is this amazing photographer, videographer, and just down around, all around artist. He is incredible. You should definitely check out some of his work. I'll try link his YouTube down below. He became famous mainly because of he was Skrillex's photographer and videographer and went touring with him. And also he's just, I don't know, he's just incredible, man. The guy's, the guy's so talented. Anyway, getting distracted. He did this series on Instagram called his vertical series where he would just have two pictures on top of each other and that was it, but it had a really cool effect of just going all the way down his Instagram. It's great. I'll see if I can get just a clip of showing you. I basically created these photos, um, which were just basically an inspiration about them. So these, this was my take of the vertical series style photos. And then more photos of my friend Sam, uh, which were just taken of him wearing some Ausler merch. That was a long period of time I didn't do photos on this because I was focusing mainly with my music label Renki. But now I want to get it back on track. Here's the last, I'm just going to ban them up all on the screen. Here's all my recent photos I took. So in brief summary of my photography story, had a crap camera, bought a cool lens for it, started a photography page for it and a website, took some great photos. Unfortunately, I edited them on my phone, went to France, learned about RAW, edited with Lightroom and RAW, photos turned out great, bought a new lens, don't mess this up, bought a new lens, took great photos, enjoying myself, having fun, and I don't really know, I'm kind of just here now, still taking photos. But I am relaunching my Instagram page, you've probably clicked off this video by now. 
I'll end it there. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of my photography story. Um, I hope you did enjoy it. It was a really different video. It's kind of gone back to the old school of telling stories. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, leave a like down below. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. I really hope this is going to be a good video. <laughs> Thank you.